Jeremy, wake up. What is it, Bob? You've got to do this week's highlight video for the people who missed the live stream. Why do I have to do that? What were they doing that was more important than watching the live stream? Some people have busy schedules, and hours are a long time. Fine, I'll be there in a minute. Hi, I'm Jeremy from veganinteractions.com, and in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to try to answer the questions of whether or not we're born vegan and just taught speciesism, and whether or not our fellow animals had the capability to make moral decisions. <laughs> we start our discussion off with a highlight from southern England, where we are hit by an absolute blizzard. Check out all the snow. We took our two dog friends out, so it looks like snow to me. What do you think? Oh, soft southern <laughs> buggers. You think that's snow, dear? Bloody hell. Now, as with these other animal rights show highlight videos I've been doing, I'm going to try to compress an hour-long conversation into about five minutes of what I think the key takeaways were. For clarity, our discussion was from a philosophical perspective, not a nutritional one, where there's no need for debate. I better coffee up for this one. Maybe coffee's my spinach. <laughs> Bob, can we get five minutes on the clock, please? So to help focus the discussion, we broke the conversation into humans versus other animals. Now, starting with human kids, we talked about how there's a spectrum of learning um, as someone develops and whether or not there's a certain point in this development where they can be vegan. And Roger clarified that his main perspective is around actually human infants. We need to separate out infants and kids and so my position is not really that kids can't be vegan it's that infants can't be vegan so this led us to try to answer the question of whether or not we're actually born good which roger had done some research around specifically around the so-called baby lab research which included infants as young as three months old are humans in innately good or are we a kind of blank slate you know the tabula risa type idea um or are we bad and we have to have the kind of badness Kind of knocked out of us and the interesting thing about the, re the research uh, is that it seems that there's elements of good and bad which are innate in in human kids so a key part of my position on sunday was to try to present the case that we are in fact born good and that we need to try to tap into that potential and identify even infants as vegan or at least having the potential to be vegan which I think Roger balanced well by making the case that we're not necessarily born good. Well, this is actually a very interesting position, this one, in the sense that, you know, we're born, we, we're kind of born good. We're free of discrimination. Mm. We're free of hate. No one's born a, as, as a racist and all this kind of stuff. The baby lab stuff contradicts this, saying that um, their, their, their suggestion is at the drop of a hat, babies as young as five months will create us and them categories and that they will then start to use any difference whatsoever between themselves and the other to create the other and then once they've created the other they will discriminate against them so then we got into an interesting dialogue around nature versus nurture and i think it's an interesting concept to think that we're born free of discrimination however i'm not sure this is necessarily given for all humans Plus, as some of our viewers pointed out in the comments, there's also kids who do awful things to our fellow animals, as well as children who are raised vegan, but then rebel in later life and start supporting animal use. Now, from a genetic perspective, I see this being more of a spectrum, where on one end, in a non-ableist, um, clinical sort of way, we have 1-2% to of people who are born psychopathic, and then perhaps a similar number who are made into sociopaths all the way to the other end of the spectrum where people are born quite empathetic and altruistic um, and put the interests of others before themselves quite naturally. We played a viral video clip which demonstrates that this is at least possible, where a five-year-old was proclaiming that they don't want to eat animals. I won't eat animals! Okay. We also briefly touched on the uh, concept of um, so-called marginal cases and um, humans with perhaps cognitive disabilities and whether or not they can be vegan if they don't fully embrace or are capable of understanding the underpinning philosophy. Now, perhaps our position on this topic is reflective of our own personalities because I know I'd like to personally think that we're born vegan and if, or more likely than not, when we're taught speciesism, we have the potential to unlearn it and bring us back to the sense of morality that we've always embraced.
Because to me, veganism at its core is about respect and nonviolence. Even if we chuck out all the stuff about the theory and, you know, fully understanding the philosophy as it were, from a strategic perspective, doesn't it make a whole lot more sense to talk about infants being vegan than being on a plant diet? Because all of a sudden we're no longer talking about veganism. To me, we should be talking about veganism and setting that as a clear end goal. And I personally think it's going to be harder to do that if we talk about plant diets instead of vegan children. Now moving on to what I think is the core of this discussion, because it affects how we present other animals in our advocacy, is whether or not our fellow animals are capable of morality. Now this is a huge topic that there's been a lot of research on, and I'm not going to try to cover that all here. But at a minimum, hopefully we can at least start to think about these things as animal advocates and the best ways in which we can build the respect for our fellow animals. Now at the core of trying to answer the question of whether or not our fellow animals are capable of morality, I think the first thing to try to do is answer the question, is it speciesist to assume we understand our fellow animals' sense of morality? And before we even got onto this topic, I was pleased to see um, some of the fellow animal advocates who are with us um, raise the same point. So with this framing in mind, we started to ask ourselves the question of whether or not our fellow animals are capable of moral decision making. Or as Roger brings up here, the concept of proto-morality. That's where I'm just like, is that not imposing our own human superiority saying, oh, you know, we're moral agents, they're just patients, well, they'll the never get it. The definition of vegan is veganism is a philosophy. That's the first four words, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, if we look at philosophy, as we did earlier, a theory or attitude, are we not, are, are, are the animals not capable of having a theory or an attitude or guiding principles? Surely I they get, live by guiding principles in a similar way to us at the, the, the Darwinian thing, differ in degree, not in, in kind. Yeah, possibly. I mean, that, I mean, that again is an interesting part of this debate. And that perhaps is the very thing that Sapontis is trying to get at when he's talking about proto-morality, because it is a question of degree and not kind. We also talked about um, Tom Reagan's concept of uh, moral agents who are capable of moral decision-making and moral patients who, while um, they cannot make moral decisions, are still worthy of moral consideration, building on the concept of philosopher Immanuel Kant's idea that moral patients should not be part of the moral community. Which to me brings me back to this whole discussion. Should we be making assumptions about our fellow animals' capabilities when it comes to their own morality? We on, we're on dodgy ground if we, if we to, to make any assertion of we know why. Aren't we on equally dodgy ground to suggest we know why not? Well, are we saying we, we know why not? What you mean that I they're... think we are when we're saying they can't be vegan. So I think the key takeaway for this for me is to not set limits on what our fellow animals are capable of. To me, I'd really like to see us focus on that gray area in between and simply create doubt and ask non-vegans that we may be outreaching, you know, what if? Because I think if we can get them engaged in a conversation, um, getting them to ponder whether or not our fellow animals are capable of morality, they're going to be much more likely to respect them through veganism than if we just say, oh, they're not capable of morality or they can't be vegan. To help further this discussion, we also played a clip of what looks to be um, like a dog person breaking up a fight between two cats. as well as some of the animal advocates who are with us commenting about stories they've seen at Sanctuary, where individuals seem to be breaking up fights, which I know I've witnessed myself at Friend. Um, Gooseus is um, just such a strong personality, and he's a goose who protects his family who happens to be a small group of ducks. Hey Gooseus, you don't have to worry about me. This is when got real. You do not mess with Gooseus's duck family. <laughs> Check out the cute little tail shake he does afterwards. Almost like the human equivalent of brushing his shoulder off and saying, that's right, you better keep your distance. <laughs> he follows them everywhere they go and I've seen him put himself between the ducks and potential danger. We even get foxes during the day, and I have no doubt that he would defend his duck friends, even against a fox. 
So it seemed like we somewhat agreed on Sunday that we're on dodgy ground making any assumptions around this, which is why I think suggesting other animals aren't capable of morality or being vegan is helping to reinforce exactly what we're trying to dismantle. This whole sense of moral hierarchy and human superiority, or what's commonly referred to as speciesism. Now, as with all of our um, debate style formats, we also did a poll before and after just to see what everyone else was thinking and whether or not their opinion changed during the course of the conversation. Now, I think the one thing that was pointed out quite rightly is that we probably should have focused in on human infants because I think once we get into the three, four, five year old mark, there's no doubt that some of us embrace veganism, especially when it's taught to us as the default position. Now, when it comes to our fellow animals, what I thought was quite cool is that a number of people who had voted uh, not sure at the beginning of the discussion had actually moved to the idea of, well, maybe they do experience some sense of morality. Which to me says that this conversation was a success because I think we built respect for our fellow animals through this discussion by asking the question, what if they are capable of morality? Which I think we should also invite non-vegans to consider throughout our animal advocacy. Now, as usual with our live streams, we also had a few laughs. I think that's your mum trying to work out why you were such a pain in the ass when you were a kid. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of us have had first-hand experience with dogs. Why, why dogs? Isn't that species hierarchy? <laughs> this is a, a, a key point in a vegan's life, I think, that uh, the having a mom apologize for all the happy, happy meals that were purchased for them. Arrest that woman immediately. If that dog would have lived with Gandhi, he would just in interpose his body between the two, wouldn't it? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. I'm taking your side here. I'm <laughs> I was going to say, I'll just yeah. put my foot yeah. yeah. so You can well, argue it yourself. We're all people of goodwill. You know, present company excluded. <laughs> and, uh, I knew you were gonna say <laughs> well, to that point, I've eaten our dog's food. Everything we give them, I've tried myself because I think it would be species just not to. Could you imagine thinking, like, oh, I'm not going to eat that. That's the dog's food. You know? Hmm. Did you? Did, <laughs> not, gonna, not gonna touch that one, are you? Did you have it? Did you have it in a bowl on the floor? Did you, Jeremy? So the last few weeks, I know I've really enjoyed doing these summary videos, and from reading your comments, it seems like you're enjoying them too. So if you can help me to combat that nasty anti-vegan algorithm by commenting, liking, and subscribing, it would really help me out. And perhaps one of the biggest things you can do is to message this as a link to one of your fellow animal advocates. So I'm not expecting these videos to blow up or go viral or anything like that. The whole idea is for these videos to serve as a bit of a catalyst to help us all to be more mindful as we're advocating for our fellow animals to get the respect they deserve. Thank you for your support and all you do for our fellow animals, and I'll see you in the next one. For free resources, such as a discussion guide and language document, check out veganinteractions.com. Thanks for watching.